This is Tyler with TJX Survival. I'm here with Troy from uh, Merkwares and Amberlet Stove. We're going to show you a fire ant, so stay tuned. So with any of our Emberlit stoves, when you're going to get them started, you want to fill it full of sticks and twigs, bark. Uh, and what I mean by bark is that inner layer of bark that becomes really fine material. You can see all this fine stuff that I've got here in the bottom and really, really tiny dry twigs. So what we're going to show you here is a way to light it with a lighter, right? It's what most people are going to have with them. Yes, I mean, we could use a ferrule rod, we could use flint and steel, but today let's show a simple way that most people are going to have with them. So <clears throat> with the opening here, which is called our feed port, and that's where we're going to feed our main fuel into, I'm going to ignite my lighter, and I'm just going to walk this around and get that material on the inside nice and lit. Get it good and going. And turn it from side to side so that flame's getting on more material in there. And then from there, and I'm gonna give this a little bit more air and space. And it's pretty wet because that's all we got here. But you got to deal with what you got. So you can hear it sizzling with the, all the moisture in there. Now, as you can see, it's still in my hand because the stove's not going to get hot immediately. And you want to be able to get all that material in there good and going. And then just calmly put it down. And here I've got our sensitive materials mat. And this is our uh, prototype sensitive materials mat. So obviously snow is sensitive material. The whole idea is to get it good and piping hot, especially when you've got a lot of moist, moist material like we have here today. One of the things that I was Initially wondering about when it comes to an emberlit stove, my question is why? Why do you want an emberlit stove? Because you can go out and bushcraft and, you know, throw some rocks and make a fire. But here's the answer to that question. Because I, I, I didn't really understand this until I took them out and used them quite a bit. But we've got a little fire that we got quick that I can cook stuff with. Uh, either boiling water or cooking snow. Uh, to turn into water or making cocoa, whatever it is that you're going to do. I can cook that really quick. And when I'm done with it, I can get rid of the aftermath of a fire. And it's clean. So it's basically a quick way to cook food, create heat, and clean up when you're done it, w with no, no trace or no mark. And it kind of gives you the ability to have that, that bushcraft in a place where you don't want to leave the bushcraft mark on the land. So that, that to me is the number one reason why you would want to get something like this. 
not only that, but it also allows you to use a small amount of material to make a fire and get it directed to your pot. Because the thing is, with an open fire, so much of that energy dissipates and goes away. And you can't actually harness that to your pot. So it's pretty cut and dry, it's a pretty simple little tool. It basically gives you a stand so that you can contain the fire. You don't have to have this huge raging thing. You can make a fire out of what you would normally just be... Starting a fire with. Yeah. Basically, you know, you're, you're kindling and tinder. So I've just got my little... Still kind of warm. Little heavy cover canteen right here. It's been cooking for a minute. And you can see it's just all melted snow into water. Um, you can put some pine needles in that, make pine needle tea, put your hot cocoa, whatever it is that you're into. You know, you just whip that up, and that probably took us about how long? Two minutes? Yeah, I mean, Maybe. I wasn't timing it, but it was pretty quick. Yep. And then you just tend it and then cook stuff up quick. Um, you'll be able to throw it out. And the, the other thing cool that we were talking about a little bit. Uh, ago is this little mat. So tell me what's this called again? So we're, we're naming it our sensitive materials mat and what it is it's uh, silicone and it allow me to you know if I wanted to throw this on the back of a truck tailgate or on a trunk of a car or in the snow where it would melt into hole and take all your heat away. Exactly. Um, I, I just wanted the ability to have uh, to use the stove on sensitive materials. And snow is definitely one of those sensitive materials. And then the stove that we use today, this is mine and that one's his, is the Fire Ant. It's just a little lightweight titanium. It's um, a pocket stove. Yeah, a little pocket stove. Folds up into sheets, kind of like playing cards almost. And then it just fits in this nice little case here. And it comes with a, a lens, in case you want to use the sun to make your fire. A Fresnel lens, if I'm calling that correct. Another nice feature of the Fire Ant or any of the Emberlit stove products is, as you can see, there's no smoke. So we can tuck ourselves back under these little woods, use a small amount of material, and keep ourselves, uh, you know, inconspicuous um, if you're in that kind of situation where you want that. Uh, nobody to really see you. Um, obviously, they can smell it, but uh, they can't pinpoint it. So <clears throat> if you have any questions about the Fire Ant, um, Tyler will leave a link down below, leave any comments in the comment section, and of course hit that subscribe button to T-Jack Survival. And uh, I'm Troy from Merkwares with Emberlid Stove. Thanks for watching T-Jack Survival.